Art can mean different things to different people. For me, it's all about the joy of creativity. So if you draw, paint, write, dance, sing, craft, play air guitar, or even sculpt using nothing more than mashed potatoes, consider yourself an artist and join our conversation. For the next half hour, meet the artist and learn about their inspiration while we all enjoy the beauty of creativity. Welcome to Season 2 of Art Talk with John Cole Artist. Well, hey, good evening, everyone. It's John Cole Artist, and I want to thank you guys for tuning in this evening. It is March 5th, 2024. I cannot believe that we're into March already, but here we are. Spring is right around the corner, and as I took a nice walk around the block today, I couldn't help but enjoy the not quite warm, but not quite cold temperatures. And of course, with a nice drizzle, really made for a beautiful walk. So tonight, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, <clears throat> in the past, I've had conversations about some things that I've done, like hiking or genealogy and stuff like that. But what I haven't done yet is any kind of demonstration. So I thought I would change it up a little bit and give that a go. Now, you're going to notice if you're watching the video, kind of a different configuration here in front of me. Um, what I ended up having to do in order to get this to work this evening is basically, I hate to use the word dial in because that's so, you know, early 2000s, but uh, I had my cell phone set up here and I'm actually connected through my cell phone into StreamYard, um, which is my, my broadcasting um, web-based software. And of course, we have the main screen. So I'll be able to look at that, look at the main screen, and you're going to be able to see both. My phone is basically set up like a guest account is, you know, to put it, you know, simple in the simplest form. It's basically a guest account. So what that means is you're probably going to see a tad bit of a delay. Uh, I noticed that primarily because we're going over cell service uh, for the broadcast off the phone. And of course, the quality isn't quite as good as I wish it would be. But you want to know something? It works. So tonight we're going to be talking about uh, metal foiling or metal foil. Now, what is that? Well, if you ever um, saw any kind of <clears throat> picture frames that have a nice foil around it, or if you see greeting cards that have foil, um, it's that type of concept. The difference is, of course, uh, between like a greeting card and what we're going to work on tonight is going to be, um, you know, the method, right? Greeting cards would use some kind of hot press uh, in order to get the foil from point A to point B. And of course, if you have a picture frame that's 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 foiled or gilded, right, there might be another process behind that. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and walk through basically a do-it-yourself do foiling uh, process so that you can take anything. Like if you notice all the stuff in the background, if I wanted to make it gold leaf or I wanted to make it silver leaf or if I, if I wanted some other color, I can do that. And it's really not as hard as I always thought it was. And I would like to say hello to Christine, my wife. She's online. Hello, Christine. Thank you for listening in this evening. So what do we need for this particular craft? Well, obviously, we need an item to, um, to put the foil on, right? I don't know whether or not you want to foil your iPad case or you want to foil your mouse, you're certainly welcome to do that. But for tonight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to foil a metal, uh, metal, I'm going to foil a wooden light bulb, a Christmas bulb that over the holidays I ended up picking up. Uh, it's, it's, it's a really great example of how you can make something that's a little drab into something really special. And then after that, I'm going to talk a little bit about this idea of illumination. Now, if you know anything about illumin illuminated manuscripts, they were popular, popular in the 12th and 13th centuries. Uh, it's really just a, a primarily a design which has some gilding applied to it. And what it does is it enhances, you know, if it's a monogram or if it's a picture, it just adds a really nice touch um, to these illuminated manuscript pages where, of course, they would have the Bible written down in Latin or something like that. Um, so we're going we're gonna to do those two examples tonight. So the first question, of course, is, is what do we need to do this? Uh, believe it or not, again, it's not that expensive. I was really surprised when I started to take a look at it. First thing you're going to need is some foil. Now, I've got a couple examples here, uh, what I'm showing up on the screen. And apologize for the lights. I ended up having to use two lights tonight in order to get a good view of my 
um, desk, which we'll look at in a second. But the first thing here is some Craft Smart Premium Silver Flakes. And it's kind of hard to see, and I'm just going to move a little bit so you can see. So the silver itself, which is through this window here, it's just a very thin uh, metallic, um, it's almost like confetti, except it's uh, not as structured perhaps as confetti would be. You could buy this at Michael's. This Craft Smart stuff's less than $10, and it really goes a long way. Uh, silver foil, gold foil, some of the other colors, uh, you can really stretch them out. Okay. There's also uh, the company Recollections. If you've ever looked at scrapbooking or anything like that, you're probably familiar with this company. This is also Foil Flakes. This one here, I think I got for, yeah, the price on there is $6. And it's quite a lot. There's probably uh, almost, uh, almost a tenth of an ounce, which again, it goes a long way. So, so far we're under $10 for that. The next thing is we're gonna need an adhesive because when we're working with foil, we need to be able to stick the foil on the thing that we want to foil. Again, Michaels and Craftsmart. This is metal leaf adhesive. Now this is a very liquid um, adhesive. It reminds me a little bit of rubber cement, although rubber cement, you know, is, is a little more um, viscous and it comes off if you rub your fingers. This type of adhesive is super sticky, like super, super sticky. If you get it on your fingers, it's not as bad as crazy glue, but it's really difficult to get off. Uh, although I think it's rubber based. I mean, it just gives me that impression that it is. This here was about $7, okay? Um, oh, another type of foil, which I'll show you in a second here, is um, stuff that you can buy on Amazon. I, I bought, for $35, I bought like 10,000 pieces of foil. They're just four by four squares, and I'll put it up on the screen here in a second once I shine the uh, camera down on my desk space here. And of course, we're going to need some brushes. Now, this stuff is incredibly hard to wash out of brushes. So if you're planning on, you know, using a paintbrush like this one here uh, to apply your adhesive, rest assured you're never going to use this paintbrush for anything else other than that. Or um, you'll end up just throwing it out because, again, it's very, very difficult to clean. I've tried water. I've tried soap and water. It just doesn't clean out of a brush. However, because I think it is rubber-based, the tips of these brushes do tend to take do tend to remain flexible. So if you use it once, you can use it again. And I've got some different size brushes here. Uh, and the reason um, you'll see in a few minutes why I have these different size brushes. So what do you say? You want to get going? Let's get going. So I'm going to go ahead and um, put my screen so it's pointed down. And again, I apologize for the quality. It's not exactly the best quality in the world, but it is what it is. And what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, this wooden Christmas bulb. Now, if you notice, it's black on the end, and that's because I painted it just a jet black earlier today with some acrylic paint because I want to really, really highlight the foiling process. So here's how we do it. We're going to take a little piece of paper here, and we're going to put a little bit of this adhesive here. This stuff goes a long way too, so we don't need a lot of it. And then we're going to go ahead and take our brush. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and paint the areas that we want to cover with foil. Okay. So all we're going to do here is we're going to start to, let me move it over this way you can see. And I'm not going to paint the, all the way around it because I want it to dry a little bit. Now, you do not have to put this on very thick. It can be very, very thin. Now, of course, when you're working with a very clear color on something like wood, which is um, not, uh, it's not a very dark color to begin with, sometimes it's kind of hard to, to see, you know, where you're applying it. You know, but if you can see here, actually, you can see it in the light here. There's a little bit of a shimmer on the top and there isn't on the bottom. So that's one way that you can tell that you're covering what you want. And when you're doing foiling like this, it's um, you really get some very beautiful results. I'll show you another example here in a few minutes of, of another item that I started to foil. And this stuff is really, really good if you want to, again, if you're doing, let's say you have a Cricut machine, 
you know, a lot of folks have cricket machines to do different things. And I think that you can, you know, create greeting cards and things like that. You could take your final design and you can put some of this glue on, you know, areas that perhaps that you want to brighten up a little bit, and then you can apply the metal foil. Um, one word of caution though, when it comes to metal foil, when you go to remove the excess, it gets messy super fast, super, super fast. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a thin layer on here, just like this. And I'm only gonna do part of it for now because again, this is super sticky. So if I cover this up and I lay it down right now, um, it's going to be stuck to my table and we don't want that. Now the nice thing too is if you miss a spot, you can easily go back and apply more of the adhesive and then you can um, put more foil on it and cover it right up. So there we go. So I've got this top part covered and I would like to say hello to my daughter, Tracy. She's on. Hi, Tracy. I'm so glad that uh, you're able to say hello. And then she says, just wanted to say hi, getting dinner together for the kiddos. Well, all right. We'll say hi to Michael and Lucy for me and let me and let them know that I love them and I'm thinking about them. All right. So I'm going to let this dry. Oops. You see, there's the problem with the sticky. I just rolled my paintbrush into the sticky. The good news is I have a paper towel right here. I could just wipe it off. All right. So I've got some of the adhesive. And again, you can see it's a little shimmery here. It's not shimmery back here, which tells me that this is the area that I want to cover with foil. So how do we apply it? So let's say it, it dries pretty quick. Um, that's actually ready for foil application already. Now, these are all foil squares that I bought uh, for, again, $35, uh, maybe $10,000. I think I said $10,000 at the beginning. I don't necessarily think there's $10,000, but there's certainly enough here to last me a very, very long time. And what's nice is there's a multitude of colors. Now, for this particular bulb, uh, I'm going to pick a color out um, at random here. Let me see, do we want to do this purple color perhaps? Yeah, let's do the purple. I'm going to pull out a couple sheets of this. Okay. Now, what does this stuff look like? It's very, very thin. So this is protected in some, some tissue. But you'll notice when I say the foil is thin, it is like super, super thin. So if you're going to apply it, um, just note that if you're going to try to keep it perfectly flat, complete, um, to cover up with one fell swoop, you might have a little difficulty. But to be honest with you, when you get some some little cracks in there, some little, you know, some folds or some overlap, it actually looks quite nice. It actually enhances. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this foil here, if I can get it off the paper. Very, very thin sheet. Very, very thin. And I'm going to take my bulb with the sticky side, and I'm just going to put it on here and cover this up. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly press to make sure that it's on all the glue here. I'm then going to take this other brush that I have, and this is just a firm brush. There's no sticky on this brush. It's just a regular brush. And I'm going to push it down into the cracks here. Let me move this out of the way. Okay. And I'm just going to push it down. I don't want to rub it too hard. I just want to push, 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 push with your finger. Just like this. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tear off the excess. Because I can reuse this. I still have more to do here. I'm just pulling it off just like I'm unwrapping a piece of candy or something like that. Again, this stuff is incredibly thin. So if you have any static electricity, um, it will stick to you. Okay. Now, in order to clean this up to move on to the next stage where we want to paint the back, we're going to use the same brush here. And I'm just going to start to brush off the extra, just like this. Okay. Just like this. Let's, let's let it go ahead and fall right onto the surface that you're using. 
Um, it's helpful to have a vacuum cleaner when you're all done with your project. To be honest with you, this stuff gets all over the place. Okay, keep brushing, brushing, brushing. You want to get off as much as you can. Okay, just like this. And what I do is I also tend to follow up with a larger brush. And I've got one of these big bad boys here. This will also take off any extra. And this comes off, this comes in really, really handy if you're um, putting some gold leaf over something that might have a little bit of texture to it. Sometimes the gold leaf can get stuck. Like if you're doing a canvas, right? If you decide to put gold leaf on a canvas, gold leaf on a canvas, or metallic leaf on a canvas, uh, it's not a very smooth surface. surface. And if you're just doing specific areas, sometimes the little flakes will get stuck. But this brush here will take care of that for you. Okay. Now look at that. Okay, here's the other side. This is just straight up wood, right? I mean, that's just a beautiful, beautiful look. Okay. And again, if I had missed some spots, I can certainly go back and fill them in. Just like that. Get it all nice and clean. Almost looks like one of those... Um, candies that you get at Christmas time, you know, they're like the little Santa Clauses and stuff that's wrapped in foil. Okay. So that's how that works. Now, if you could imagine covering the whole thing, I won't, you know, belager the point here and go on and do the whole thing. But what I'll do later is I'll finish it up. And then, you know, you can make a necklace out of this. You could use this for, um, you know, maybe something as a display. You can put them in and you can make them any color you want because the foil comes in virtually every color. It's pretty cool, right? All right, let me clean up some of this. I will put this foil away so that we can get it out of the way. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you tonight is what about perhaps non, you know, 3D objects? What if you wanted to do it on paper, right? I mean, how, how well is that going to work? Well, why don't we find out? Now, what I did earlier today, I'm just going to, You'll notice this stuff gets all over the place, all over the place. Oof, stuff is literally all over the place. So what if we wanted to do it on paper? So I was talking a little bit earlier about illuminated manuscripts and things like that. So what I did earlier was I drew out a monogram letter C, and I did it on a black piece of paper. Okay, now this is a black. Now, I went through already, and I put down the glue. Um which is why this C looks darker here, okay? That's just the tacky glue. I didn't want to uh, take up too much time re-gluing everything or uh, uh, laying down the glue. And then I use some acrylic, acrylic markers, and I'll show you what I'm using here in case you're interested. I'm using um, the, gra the Grabby acrylic marker set. I uh, purchased these things off of Amazon. Works really, really well, nice deep colors, uh, and it's because it's acrylic, you can pretty much put it on anything and not worry about it washing off. Um, but what I did is I went through and I did this letter C and I'd like to make this look better by gilding the actual letter itself. So after I transferred it over, I'm um, using some pastels as a chalk to get the image from one, you know, from the printout to this, I went ahead and I painted that and now I want to gild this. So this time though, I'm going to use some gold color because I think the gold keeps with the idea of an illuminated manuscript. So I'll pull out this piece of gold here. And what I'm going to do is exactly what I did on the other project or on the other little thing. I'm just going to take it and I'm going to lay it down right on top of my glue. Now this time though, I'm going to just go ahead and tap just like this to cover up all the spots. Again, if you rub like this, what could potentially happen is you could rip um, in spots that you don't want it to rip. And we don't want to do that. All right, and this piece here, I can move this down just like this. Sometimes it's helpful to have a pair of tweezers as well uh, to pick up different pieces of the, of the um, foil if you need to. Or if you're working in a very small area, sometimes that's nice too. And let's move this over. And the last one here. I'm really excited to see how this is going to look. Okay, let's tap all this down. And then we're going to do it through the same process again. We're going to go ahead and take the brushes. We're going to brush off the extra. 
We're going to see if there's any spots that we need to fill. Put a little more glue on if we need to. I think a little spot needs to be right there. Just like this. Now, can you guys imagine what you would be using this for? Do you guys have any projects in mind where you think that this would really enhance the look of it? I bet you you can think of something pretty quick because this could be used for everything. All right. Next step is to wipe this off. So I'm going to again take this firmer brush here, which we used for the purple a few minutes ago. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to now start to brush this off just like this. Just like this. And we're going to try to get off as much as we can. Again, this is an extremely messy project craft enhancement, as it were. However, the end results really are quite spectacular. And I see that Steve Bird is watching. Steve, how are you tonight? I haven't talked to you in quite a while, my friend. Steve and I worked together in Boston uh, before I retired from the Coast Guard. Great guy, let me tell you. All right, so all we're going to do is we're going to, and you can be a little bit strong with the brush. You don't have to be gentle with it um, unless you're working and trying to goal leaf something that is inherently um, requires delicate hands. But for a piece of paper, and this is a thicker piece of paper, I can be a little, a little harder on it just to get this off. I'm just going to tap this, harden the noise. I'll move some of this leaf over and let me just clean this up a little bit here just like this and again i'm just taking off all the leaf that's around the glue that i placed down earlier so I'll shift back over to this bad boy and now i'm just going to And again, I apologize for the camera. There we go. And we'll just get all this off. Just like that. Now, because I did put this down in pastel, when I transferred the original drawing, this brush here that I'm using to remove all the extra gold leaf, it's also taking off any of the extra chalk that I had on there. There we go. Now this looks pretty freaking sweet. Now, of course, you can see still a lot of the flakes over here. So, you know, what I would do is I would clean this thing out, maybe, you know, this kind of number with my hand here to clean it off and then go back in and get rid of all this. But you can really do some spectacular um, things with gold leaf. Now, look at that shine. Let me shine it up, Let's put it up to this camera. Isn't that cool? Look at that. That's gorgeous. And that, my friends, is how you use the gold leaf. And let me go ahead and go back to this. So that's how you use the gold leaf. So really what you need is you need the glue, which again is about seven or eight dollars at Michael's. You need some gold leaf or silver leaf in this particular case, which is under ten dollars. And my recommendation is a paintbrush that you don't want anymore because, again, this stuff is super hard to clean off of paintbrushes. Um, but that's basically the whole process. Um, so in the future, I think, you know, looking for, oh, that's right, I wanted to show you the other thing I was working on. Also Christmas related, I started to gold leaf uh, one of these little wooden uh, soldiers that I think I picked up at Hobby Lobby or someplace like that uh, in Christmas colors. You really can do a lot with it. Um, I certainly do recommend that you give it a shot because it's not hard, right? If you can do a little bit of painting with the glue and you have some gold leaf, you could just apply the two together and come up with some amazing results. So I encourage you guys to give it a shot. Oh, Carrie's on as well. Hi, Carrie. Thank you for watching. I appreciate that. Um, but that's it. That's what I got for you tonight. So I just wanted to give you... Um, 
really a quick little demonstration on how you can use Gold Leaf. So I, again, I encourage you to give it a shot. And by the way, with all the stuff that's left over, your uh, your Gold Leaf scraps, your Silver Leaf, in my case, Purple, um, I keep all mine in this little storage bin because at some point it would be kind of interesting to see you know, a whole blend of metallic flake colors on a particular project, especially if you're doing something like this little guy here. It would look really cool, I think, to have maybe his hat multicolored. So nothing goes to waste, and that's another good part of it as well. Thank you guys for watching tonight. Um, next week, I don't have a guest lined up just yet, but stand by. I'm sure I'll have somebody amazing on. If not, maybe another demonstration. But in the meantime, I hope you guys keep doing what you're doing and doing some amazing artwork. Um, in the meantime, you guys have a great week, and I'll see you next Tuesday night. Thank you so very much for joining me on the Art Talk podcast, where it's my goal to bring artists together to talk about their craft. If you'd like to join me for a conversation, please reach out via email at johncoleartist at gmail.com or by visiting my website at johnrobertcole.com. So until next time, keep crafting, painting, and inspiring others with your creativity. You make more of an impact than you know. See ya.